In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a cohesive collage series from the five types of collage papers taught in my five most recent YouTube art demos. Hello, my name is Katherine Raines. I'm a mixed media collage artist, and welcome to Tune In Tuesday, where I share weekly art demos to expand your mixed media toolbox. If you see value in this video, I would deeply appreciate a thumbs up, and if you would subscribe to my channel. Links for all the supplies to make these papers are down below under Show More, as well as links to all the art demos to make these five papers. You might also want to check out my free five-day workshop where I show you how to use all the collage papers made during Tune In Tuesday to make beautiful collages the very first try. So let's get into creating a collage series from five types of collage papers. So what we're going to be doing today is one of my favorite things, which is actually creating a collage from all of the papers that we've been making together. So over the past however many, it's been five weeks basically, I've made five different types of papers. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you how I take five papers, and these are the five different types of papers that look like they don't go together, how do I actually put them into a single collage? Now, if you haven't actually seen all of these demos, there's links underneath the show note. So we've got eyedropper paper with water. This is rubbing alcohol paper. This is paint skins. This is thread, let's see, ain't what do you call it? It's called a thread pulling. And we've got doodling. Now, one of these gave me a big headache and let's see if you can guess which one it was. Which one was really hard to fit into a collage? Let me show you where this started. So these five papers resulted in this huge pile of papers that I made from them. Now, it, I can't make a collage using this many papers. It would, it's just overwhelming to me. So the way I start every single one of my collages is if I take this big pile and I literally go through every single piece of paper and I go, okay, do you love this one? And I actually do love this one. So that goes in the yes pile. That's in the yes pile. I'm actually really crazy about both of these. So they go yes. Eh, that's not as good. No. Let me pull these away. With all the papers, they get into my yes pile. Then I separate them a second time into colors and values. Now, in this case, I actually just made three piles of lights, mediums, and darks, and I made a collage based on those three values, but I also was looking at color as well. But sometimes I'll also actually separate it into color families. So in this case, I would have blues and reds, which originally I did do, but then I just kind of pulled it all together into uh, light, mediums, and darks. And because I'm only working with papers that I absolutely adore, I have a limited number of collage papers to actually choose from, which makes this exponentially easier to do. Now, the demo I'm about to do for you, I've done two other times where I took five different papers and I made a series out of them. So this is the first time I did it. This is a, a demo I, I have on YouTube. And then I took another set of five papers and made two more collages. Now, so this right here represents 10 different collage papers. But if you look at them all together, they look like they go together, right? That's because all of my collage papers are all made with three primaries. So this is a phthalo blue green shade, Hansi Yellow Light. This is Quinn Magenta. I use this particular brand. You don't need to use this brand at all. I just happen to love Nova Paints because they have a really nice kind of a between a thick body and a fluid body, kind of a medium body kind of consistency, so I just like them. So my challenge, what I'm actually challenging myself with every five papers is to make a collage using just those five papers that I just did. So this represents 10 different papers, five and five. And here's the collage I made as a sample of the current five papers. This is the five papers I just showed you so the question is, so even though this one has five different papers than this set and this set, these all actually go together in a series and that's my intention. And this is how I make pretty much all the collages I make. So if you took Collage Kickstart from me, if you're in Collage Keepsake or Collage Joy, 
I have a similar formula. Now the guidelines change depending on just where I am at the moment, but here are the guidelines I am following for this series so they all fit together. First, I want five different papers for each one of these collages. So each one of these collages represents five different papers. These are the same five papers. These are the same five papers. This is a second, another set of five papers. I want different values next to each other. So for instance, I've got light and dark. I've got light and medium. I've got medium, dark, and light. So all the values with it when I'm placing papers have to be different. And I want one to two pieces of paper that are the same across a kind of a small mini series. So for this one, this particular paper made each one of these. For these two, it was this paper that made each one of these. And actually this orange was on both of them as well. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do it on this one. Every single piece of paper on each collage has to be a different size. So you can notice on this one, there isn't a single piece of paper that is the same exact size. And I want a circle on each one. So I've got a circle on each one of these. And so by kind of limiting the parameters of what I'm gonna put onto my collages, it helps them to read as a series, particularly since all the collage papers are using the same three colors, even though the papers are quite different from each other. So, first thing I wanna decide is what is gonna be the paper that I can pull onto this one that will kind of tie these two together. What I found was this one paper that I love. This is an alcohol drop paper, and actually I believe it fits right, if I was gonna fit them together, they fit together right there. Now I need to find something light or medium to go against it. So I pull out my light and medium papers, and here's a few I have to choose from, and I just start placing these with this. And then I come across this one, which is a very light paper, and I just love that. I love that contrast of these two together. What am I gonna put across here? Now, I don't want it to completely mirror this. So, you know, if I had put like this and this, then my collage is kind of set up in the exact same way, so I'm trying to mix it up. I could even like totally mix it up like that. That would look good too. But I'm just gonna start here and see what I can do with this. It, so I took the same doodle paper and said, hmm, maybe I could put that there. Only problem is this is kind of, it's two the same. And I want these to read as two different collages, but I also want them to read as they go together. So what I did is I cut off, I had a, a few of these, so I cut off the bottom of this, put that there. That makes it a little different. I really, I don't know why, it's the simplest paper to make. And it is one of the, uh, it's, this is, well, I made this during part two of doodles. But it seems like I need something underneath this to kind of kind of contrast it as opposed to making it just the same. So I find a couple papers that are kind of medium value. Really think that's gorgeous. Now obviously I would cut that off, but I really like that a lot. Another possibility that I found that I liked was this one. Almost the same as this. It kind of reads the same when you put this on top of it. Really, either one of these would work quite nicely, but since this one's kind of cut all already, it's like accidentally is the right size, I think I'm gonna use that one. So right now I've got a really nice foundation, to me, and that, that's the only criteria I'm using. Do I like this kind of combination of papers? And I've got a lot of contrast in terms of values and in terms of color as well. Now, I need, what else do I need here? This is the thread pulling paper. Now. I don't know if you guessed it, but this is the paper that gave me a heartache. Usually these kind of collages take me a very short amount of time to create, but I had a very hard time figuring out how am I gonna incorporate this thread paper into this. I just couldn't make it work, so I ended up layering thread paper on top of thread paper. So this one I think might work really well there. The dark paper makes this thread paper pop, so that might work. But now I've got this kind of open space here. So I'm thinking, what could I put here to kind of pull it together? I'm kind of a circle person. So I pull, I have a whole file full of cut circles like this. Um, those of you who have taken classes with me, Collage Joy and Collage Keepsake, I give you the templates for these. So you can cut all different size circles. And I show you how to cut the circles as well. Just adding this little circle here, I'm thinking, wow, I really like that. And I like it is because it kind of continues a circle here. Like there's already a kind of a formation of a circle. 
So actually what I'll do, so it even gives more of the illusion of a circle. I put it there. Yeah, then it, it's hard to get, it's hard to just like move these things. They all want to move together. Um, but you can see there's like an illusion of a circle. However, it's white and this is a light color. So I could paint that circle. That would be nice. Let me try out a couple other circles. Um, this one, let's see, that one might work. It's a little more contrast to it. It also gives the illusion of a circle going around. But I think I want a bigger circle and I've got all size circles. Let me try this one. If I place this the way I like it, something like that. So now it gives the illusion that this circle is continuous. Okay, so we're getting somewhere here. Now this is kind of like open space. Now I got these little cool little dots right here. So I'm gonna pull out my little, uh, these are my hole punchers. And I'm thinking if I get some, this is the same paper actually, make some, uh, some hole punches and see if I can kind of break this up like I did with this one. And this would also serve to pull this together. I love hole punches because they're the fat, very fast way to get some um, kind of easy dots. That's cool. And I have different sizes because I, I want to mirror kind of what I did there without totally doing the exact same thing. Now I made a whole bunch of these um, in, with different colors. So that's kind of nice. I've got a couple others, they're a little darker. Let's see if the darker ones would work better. Let's see. So what do you think, light or dark? I'm, I'm thinking I like these better just because they have a little more variety in the color. So I think I wanna go with those. But what I do when I get to this point, because my collage is pretty much almost there. I look at the collage and I go, okay, what is not completely like calling my name? Like what part do I not like completely? And this is so, well, this is black and white. This is black and white. And it seems like I need something to break this up because it's a lot of black and white here. So I pull out my circles again. I just start playing with, well, could I do another circle on this? You know, something to break up that um, circle right there. This is actually part of the thread design I made. And I think, wow, that might help. But then I still have this black and white. So I'm thinking I'm going to paint that in with a really, really light baby blue. So this is one of my paint skins. Just so this is just glittery paint stuck into gloss medium. So I'm going to experiment and see if I can get this paint skin on here. Now I did experiment up before I came on camera. So I kind of sort of placed it already. So I'm gonna see if, that, if this still works. So place this down, place that down. Now there's just a little pop there, which I think is kind of interesting. You know, with collage, you're constantly maneuvering papers over and over again. It's hoping you can get them back in the same spot that you just had them. All right, so. Okay, I think that's good. I like this whole collage, except it's just too much black and white here. So I'm gonna take a big risk and I'm gonna paint this on camera. It's a 28 pound copy paper that I actually made this on. But if I put paint on here, I don't like it. It would be hard to get it off because copy paper absorbs the paint really fast. So what I did before I came on camera is I put a coat of gloss medium on this, which would make this react like a dry erase board. So if I put paint on this and I don't like it, I can wipe it off as long as I wipe it off pretty quickly and it will be the original. So it kind of allows you some wiggle room. This is the phthalo blue. I'm gonna put much more white because I really want the faintest of light blues. I just want a little bit of contrast because I want the design underneath the show. I am gonna add some water to this because you know, everything is better with water, right? So now this is very diluted. This is, this is what I'm looking for. Oh, wait, wait, this is risky doing this on camera. And I'm just gonna lightly, oh yeah, it's good. So I'm just lightly adding this. Yeah, I'm already liking that a lot. I like being able to see the design underneath, but it's just slightly shaded. So 
This will dry very, very quickly because it is very, very watered down paint. I'm almost ready to glue this. I glue in reverse order. So I've got, this is the last piece that's gonna go on. This is the next to last piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this one big piece on here. And I use two different glues. This is a matte medium, which is a liquid version of a matte gel. Same glue, I use Liquitex, doesn't matter what brand you use. You don't have to use this glue. This is just my preferred glue. I've been using this for a long time. I buy this in bulk. And depending on whether I use a matte or a gel has everything to do with how thick the paper is. So this paper is actually really thin. This is a copy, a 28 pound copy paper. So I think I'm gonna start with my matte medium, which is very liquidy. I, by the way, this substrate, this piece of paper is a mixed media paper, I believe, or it could be a watercolor paper. I'm not sure. I, I had it in my stash and I just cut it to size. So put this here. And I actually co I, um, coated the um, paper with a gesso on both sides. Now, some of these papers are gonna hang over just a tiny bit, which I want them to do. That way I can cut them to size when I'm done. Oh, this is not adhering really well. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to my other glue. Now, I always glue on top and on bottom. And the reason I'm doing this primarily is so that I can scrape out bubbles. Catalyst wedge. Okay, one piece down. Um, second piece is this one. Now, I'm gonna show you a little hack I use. Let's see if I can just push this out of the way. So this is a catalog. This is a, just a big fat catalog. And my favorite way to glue is actually to just turn a page over and glue right on the catalog. But it's, it's the back side, obviously. So I apply the glue holding the, the piece of paper down so that when I lift this up, I've got glue on the magazine, not on my table, and I can just turn this over and I've got a clean sheet to do the same thing with the next piece of paper. So bring this back. And I don't know which side, I think I had it like this. So I put this down. Again, this one's a little bit, it's, it's a tiny bit bigger than the actual um, substrate. And that gives me some wiggle room when I, go, when I cut it down to mount it. So when the series gets big enough, right now the series will be seven pieces over three demos. When it gets big enough, I will mount them all to um, cradled boards and most likely sell the collection all together. I think it's, <laughs> I've been thinking about it. This will be called my Tune In Tuesday collection. Okay. Again, I'm always doing the same thing. Just put some glue on top. Let's get this lined up. Okay, catalyst wedge. Okay, so this piece goes something like that. This one's really thick. This one I actually also put gloss medium on top. So I was thinking maybe I could paint on here. Um, just to give it some, you know, differences since the other one had this exact same element in it. I thought maybe I'd paint it, but in the end I decided I really love the white um, contrast. But this one's giving me a little bit of a headache here. So now, okay, let's see if I can maybe catalyst wedge this in place. By the way, you may know this, but the matte medium and the gel, me gel medium will glue completely dry. So even though there's residue um, a lot of places around here, it's going to, you know, you won't be able to see it other than the texture. So I am trying to get the texture off of here um, with the catalyst wedge because that will show. Although, you know, texture on a mixed media piece isn't bad. So now I've got this little thing because this is going to be hard to do without fixing these together first. So I am going to Let's see, I'm going to put glue on the back of here so I can get an initial, get it initially stuck together. Okay, so just about there we'll make my circle. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, so now I know where it's supposed to go. Just move my 
move my catalog over and put a little more glue underneath. Get my circle down. And then glue the rest of this. Add, add glue to the rest of this. And then it gets easy. It's funny, glue from my fingers are now adhering <laughs> to the collage. <sighs> you know, I always say, every time I don't wear gloves, I go, you gotta wear gloves. You always have to wear gloves. Okay, so now I've got this. Pull this back. And find the place that I wanted it. So I got a little glue hanging off here from my hands. And luckily that this little blue circle that I just painted with you appears to be completely dry now. Okay, now I'll just get my little circle, which I like that. And then I've got two of these dots. One I was gonna put here and one here. Yep. I just need a little bit of glue on each one of these. But I think, I think that's it. Other than the finishing touch that I'm thinking about, which is little dots around the edge, I would trim this right now, but it would actually make some of these pieces come up. You know, these look like they go together. And I just really love these. I have two more collages as part of my series, my Tune In Tuesday series. I'll be selecting five more papers, one, one paper a week, to continue the series. So I don't know what I'm gonna be. Oh, you know what? Oh no, I didn't put this on. I'm just gonna do that off camera, but I am gonna put it in there. We'll put it right there. And finally, these are done. So off camera, I did add that little piece of paint skin. I had to actually pull this up and paste it underneath. And I added little dots around the circle. And I also, just to make it consistent with this one, I also added dots around this. So I'm pretty much in love with these two. Now my Tune In Tuesday series consists of seven pieces. Here are the two new ones. And again, because I have used three primaries to make all of the collage papers, and this represents 15 types of collage papers, they all go together. So I'm pretty excited about this little series that's growing. Starting next week, I will start my next series of five collage papers. And at the end of that series of five, I will pull them together into another set of two or three collages to continue adding to this Tune In Tuesday series. So thank you for joining me for another Tune In Tuesday art demo. I'm very grateful that you give me your time and I will see you next week for Tune In Tuesday. Bless you all. Thanks for coming.